Happy to see you back in my shop again. I'm Earl. This is Earl's Small Segment Shop. What I'm going to do today is make a couple of tools. We'll make a couple of Olin tools. Now, before I get in the arguments, I know everybody's got their favorite tools, and that's the way it should be. And I think in most cases, people's favorite tools are the ones they learned with. I say most cases, not always. When I started turning, I was told you have to use all these classic tools. You got to have a bow gouge, a roughing gouge, a spindle gouge, etc., etc. All cost a lot of money. Then you got to have a Expensive sharpening system to sharpen them with. And then you gotta learn to use them and learn to sharpen them. At the time I didn't have any money. I barely had enough to buy a Harbor Freight Lathe. The fact is it was a present. So I looked around and I found what's called an Olin tool. And I made a set. This is one of the three sixteenth size bits. This is one's got quarter inch bed in it. And I made one, just one, with an eighth inch bit. But I made quite a few with the others. And I learned to use them and I found out they cut right well. And then later they come out with carbides. I got I got a set of carbides on a square shaft. And they cut real good. Oh, they cut good. But they were aggressive on the square shafts. So later, I made a set on round shafts. Got one right here. Actually, this is a very small one here. I made a different size. This is a small one on a round shaft. And on a round shaft, you can rotate them so they don't cut as much. You can get fine cuts. You get a lot of control. And you can do anything with these carbide tools. A lot of people just use carbide tools. That's all they use. And they cut great. But then again, a lot of people say, well, they're not real turning tools. They're, they're learner's tools or whatever. But a lot of people use them, make fabulous turnings with them. And I tried using them, and they, like I said, they cut good. They cut great. But I also found out they don't cut any better than my Olin tools. Olin tools cut just as good. They're a lot cheaper and they're easier to use. They take 10 seconds to sharpen one. And I bought a grinder from Big Lots for $20 that I use for sharpening them. And each one, each tool takes less than $10 to build. So we're going to build a couple a day. I'm going to build one for quarter inch bits and one for three sixteenths inch bits. Okay, so what do I need to build them? Well, I need a couple of steel, round steel stock. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to make one for a three sixteenths bit and one for a quarter inch bit. For the quarter inch bit I got a 5 eighths piece of round stock. For the 3 sixteenths bit I got a half inch piece of round stock. I've got the bits. These are made for metal lays to cut metal, cut steel. And I got one that's three sixteenths, they're all two and a half inches long. I got one quarter inch or two and a half inches long. They're HSS steel. Now you can get them from Amazon. You can order them from Amazon. You can get them from Grizzly. You can actually get them from Harbor Freight, but they come in a package. One one quarter, one three sixteenths, one eighth, 
one round quarter and one flat piece. But you can buy them individually, like I said, Grizzly and Amazon, I'm sure there's other places. Then I need a drill. For the one quarter, I need 11 30 seconds drill. For the 3 sixteenths, I need a 17 64 drill. Need a couple of set screws. Now these are one quarter inch tall set screws and they're 1032 threads. I need a tap, 1032 tap. Of course I need to drill to drill them. Now I got a whole bag of one quarter inch 1032 set screws from Fast and All for next to nothing. So I got plenty of them. And I only need one for each tool. Now, what you want is a snug fit. You got to drill them for a snug fit. And that way, you only need one set screw right at the very end. I know a lot of people make them, they, try, they put two set screws in. You put two set screws in, have a loose fit, you're going to waste a lot of material. This is how short I turn them down to. This is, this is one that I just pulled out of a tool. I could still use this one. I can still clamp it. And that's a very short piece. Very, very short. So, like I said, you need a snug fit. So if you don't have an 1132 drill bit or a 1764 fit, you don't have to buy a whole set of drills to get them. You can order them individually from Fast and All. I'm sure you can get them from Amazon too, individually. So the first thing I'm going to do is grind the ends of these smooth. Find a center and center punch them. Now after I center punch them, if it ain't close enough to the center, I can re-grind the ends a little bit and re-punch them. So I'm just going to grind the ends on the grinder a little bit, then I'm going to center punch them. I got them both center punched. If I'd have missed the center too far, they're not perfect, they're close enough. But if I'd have missed too far, I could just re-grind them a little bit and re-center punch them. But I got them center punched. And I'm going to drill a small hole and then enlarge it. Probably make three different drills or four different drills. Small hole and then bigger and then bigger until I get to these two sizes. Okay, I've got the holes drilled in the ends. Are they perfectly centered? No. Not even close. If I was a machinist, they would be, but I'm not. They're good enough. They're not perfectly centered. Now i got to clean them up. Clean them up. I'm just going to put them in the chuck. Put the tailstock in a hole. I'm going to spin them. I'm going to put sandpaper on them. Simple as that. I got the holes in the end. Like I said, they're not centered, not perfectly centered, but that's okay. Then, I got them cleaned up a little bit. I don't get my hands dirty. They're smooth enough. I don't care if they're real shiny or not. Now, the next thing I need to do is to drill the ends and tap them for the set screws. Now I want the set screws to be as close to the end as I can get them. That way I can use the use the steel down until it's just a little piece. So I'm going to have to center, punch them, drill them, 
and tap them. I got a 1032 tap to tap them with. I don't want to tap them through the skinniest part because they ain't centered. I'm going to tap them through the thickest part. So I'm going to go ahead, drill them, and tap them. Okay? They're cleaned up a little bit. Center punch them, drill them, and tap them both right at the very end. I'll get a close-up shot of these, but they've been tapped. Set screw put in right at the very end. Of course, I haven't ground a profile on these yet. So now, really, the only thing you have to do is put a handle on them. Now, a handle, I don't have any wood that's actually thick enough to make a handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue two pieces of wood together and make a handle. Now all my handles are different. Everyone's different. Different woods, different shape. When you make a handle, use the wood you want. Make it the shape you want. It's your handle. Fits your hand. But I make all mine different. I can look at it and tell exactly what tool it is just by looking at the handle that way. So, I gotta choose some woods and then glue them together for a handle. I glued up some pieces of wood, make a couple of handles. Just wood I found around the shop. Actually, three pieces. I'm going to go ahead and turn some handles. Brass or copper couplers uses ferrules. Now you don't really need ferrules on this type of tool. You need ferrules when you got a tool with a tapered tang that you drive in. It keeps the wood from splitting. For these, it's just decoration, that's all. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to chuck one end up, just like this. Put the center point on the other end. Then I'm going to turn this in as the end you hold. And I'm going to reverse it, and I'm going to drill out the other end. And I'm going to turn them. I got one end turned. I'm going to drill out the other end on the lathe using a Forstner bit. I'm just going to do it on the lathe. I got it set right on center. So I'm going to go ahead and just drill it out. This is the half inch. Handles have been turned. Nothing fancy. It's a handle. It's not nothing I'm going to put on a shelf to look at. It's to use. This is one for the big shaft. The one-eighth bit. And it's been drilled out with a Forstner bit. The ferrule's been put on. Of course, like I said before, ferrule is just for looks on these. Ooh. Don't really need them. Same thing with a small one. The ferrule's been put on. It's been turned. Both shafts have been drilled. And both set screws have been drilled and tapped and put in. Right on the ends right here. So these are ready to be put together now. I'm going to get a close-up shot of them, but they're ready to go together. Now, when I put a put them in a hole, put a little epoxy on them, put them in a hole, what happens is I push them down in a hole, it compresses the air, I let go and it pushes them right back out. That's not good. So what I do is at the bottom of the hole, I measure the bottom of the hole, mark it, and I drill a tiny little hole through the side somewhere. Little hole, one sixteenth or smaller. That way when I push them down in, the air escapes out the little hole and I don't push them back up. 
So yeah, next thing I got to do is put a little epoxy in, drive them in after I drill a hole in the bottom. I've got a very small hole drilled right in the bottom of the big hole here. Very small hole through the side. Probably can't see it right here. Very small hole. It's enough to let the air out. So what I have to do now, <coughs> just mix up some epoxy, spread a little epoxy around the hole here. Drive the shafts in, let the epoxy set. Then the only thing left to do after that will be to profile the bits in it to whatever type of cutting I want to do with them. <clears throat> we got two tools built, I haven't sharpened them yet. But let's talk about how I sharpen them, actually the, the profile I put on them. Now these two tools here, this one's a one quarter, this one's 3 sixteenths. I very rarely use the one quarter. Always use the 3 sixteenths. Now these two I use to do the inside and they're sharpened on a curve on the left side. I'm going to get a close up of them. But they're sharpened like this. So the, actually the cutting is right on the, right on the corner, on that side and on the corner of them. Like I said, I use the 3 sixteenths all the time. Okay, I'll get a close up of these two. These two. This one ain't got a furrow, that's okay. These two I use for the outside. And they're sharpened just the other way, on the other side. And I very rarely ever use a quarter inch. I always use the 3 16th. You can see how they're sharpened. I'll get a close up of these two. These two. Eight, uh, 3 16th and a quarter inch. And I got these rounded on the ends. I'll get a close up of these two. They're rounded on the very ends. And I never ever use them, ever. Don't need them. But I'll go ahead and get a close up of them. This one here is quarter inch and it's just square on the end. Now I use this when I want to remove a lot of material or if I want to make a flat area. Like when I'm putting in a floating bottom, I need it very flat. I use this. And this is just square on the end, is all it is. So that's three tools I use the 3 16th inside, the 3 16th outside, and this one. It's the only 1 8 inch one I got. And it is just rounded on the end. And once in a while, I'll use it if I want to do some fine work. I can do fine work with this one. Of course, I could grind it to a diamond if I wanted. But uh, I'll go ahead and get a shot of this one too. So really, like I said, there's only three that I really use all the time. The 3 16 for the inside, the 3 16 for the outside, and the square one. And on these close-ups I'm doing, I put a drawing of how they're sharpened. A drawing with a blue magic marker, and then where it's sharpened, I'll put a red magic marker so you can tell. So I'll go ahead and get a shot of this one too, might as well. Well, there you go. Two tools made. I buy the steel. From the ironworks, I don't get it from big box stores. I pay about, oh, maybe a dollar each piece of steel, depending on the diameter. They're easy to make. I got a cheap Harbor Freight drill press I drill them with, so that's no problem. And only.
only thing you need. Set screw. And these bits for metal working lathes. They're HSS steel. They're two and a half inches long. You can get them from quite a diff quite a few different places. I usually get them from Grizzly. You can get them from Amazon. I'm sure there's other places you can get them. Of course, a handle's easy to make. Anybody can make a handle. That's no big deal. So. I hope you appreciate this little video and uh, I think pretty soon I'm going to do a video on how to make a disc sander for the lathe, a disc sander that works right on the lathe. So uh, I appreciate you watching my videos and uh, please come back and see my next video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and if you go to my channel and click on the videos at the top you'll see all of them. So I know some people don't know how to do that. Most do, but some don't. So please come back and see my next video.